Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So I'm very lucky today. I'm over here at the Dr. Beasley's Labs Headquarters Distribution, basically the headquarters, right? Uh, so here in Illinois, I'm here with Jim himself. Jim, the owner, how are you? Great. Welcome to the Pan the Organizer channel. I'm Thank lucky you. enough because Jim is not only the owner, but he has a background in chemistry. So it's made in America, but made right here, thanks to him, they blend their own chemicals. So what I wanna do today, is have Jim uh, have us go over the uh, this range here. The range is much bigger, but I can select a few mm -hmm. of these products to go over the technology, yeah. maybe give some tips and tricks on their application and what distinguishes the Dr. Beasley's brands from the rest. Uh, and also stay tuned all the way till the end, guys, because we're gonna do a cool lab slash chemistry kind of trick. So he's gonna blend something with us and we're gonna do a deep dive into that. So I want you to make sure to stay tuned all the way till the end. Uh, also, don't worry, uh, I'll put the links to all of these products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So Jim, let me start right away. One thing that I noticed, first of all, the name Dr. Beasley's, it's not Dr. Jim's. So can no. you briefly give us an explanation <laughs> where the name comes from yeah. and how the company started basically? Yeah, basically, well, it started from Simon Shine Shop, okay. uh, a detail shop in Chicago. Yep. And that's where it started. And Simon is named after an Alaskan Malamute. And okay. Dr. Beasley's is also, Be Beasley was an Alaskan Malamute that I had. So a dog. A dog. Yep. Named it after my be best friend. Um, so. The doc, the doctor comes from when I got a car. I always wanted, you know, I I always wanted to have systematically take care of that car. I wanted to talk to the customer. I, I took it very seriously. Yeah, detail is very serious for me, and I wanted to do the highest quality work. So, talking to the customer, look, looking over the car, we had a work order. So I thought it was like a doctor, and I and I would tell my foreman, hey, we have a clipboard, and we're you're the doctor. That's the pa patient. Write the all the things we needed to do so the technicians knew what to do with it and and you're a doctor I like a form. prescription like a prescription okay absolutely so that's where it comes from yep that's awesome so uh what we have here is a few of the products that i know some of them that i've tested and that i like and others that i'm very curious about so let's start right away because i know my audience is going to be very curious so i see this line it's called the nsp it's called a nano surface primer so basically a polish slash primer that you can apply before a ceramic coating Yep. However, there are primers in other brands. What's different about this one? And what's the purpose or why did you formulate this? And I hear it can potentially make sure that your ceramic coating reaches its maximum durability because unfortunately, depending on conditions, maintenance, and mileage, so on and so forth, many variables, some coatings fail before they reach the end of their lifespan. Mm -hmm. So how does this play into your brand? Well, I was talking to a lot, a lot of de detailers about coating failure. And there's, they think there's a lot of coating failure out there and they were frustrated by that. Yeah. And to me, it made sense that, hey, looking into polishes, there's a lot of oils, there's a lot of silicone, there's a lot of uh, carnauba, a lot of fillers and different things like that that don't last a very long time, or you gotta try to wipe that off. And me, I was going in, and I'm gonna make this short, but it was five years of development, and basically I had to start from scratch, and I had to start with the abrasive. So this is not a traditional abrasive, this is actually a sphere. Okay. And man-made sphere because um, bracelets are normally like rocks. They have a lot of right angles and yes. a lot of different shapes and different things like that. And it gouges the surface. Yep. And um, you have to do a lot of work with it. That's why you need the oils and things. So I wanted to use uh, nanotechnology. So I had a nano gel that I put these uh, sphere abrasives in. And then I knew that we didn't have to wipe off any oils or anything, things like that. Okay. And since I'm starting with nanotechnology, so when you when you polish, you cut you cut the paint yep. and you cover it at the same time. Okay. That's like a perfect clean room. No dirt or dust is going to get on there. So you have the nanotechnology when you cut the paint. And to me, that was a beautiful thing. And then I wanted to wanted that. that to me, that's like a foundation of a yes. house. Yep. That's a foundation. Now you can put ceramic coating on top of that. Okay. So you basically have, is it a, let's say, silicon dioxide kind of base layer to which other things like ceramic coatings can attach themselves to? Yes, is that it can the cross link. It can cross, you know, nanotechnology can cross link onto other nanotechnology. Yes. So I don't even care about what brand. As long as it's nanotechnology, you yep. can use other brands on top of this and it will cross link together. So through a mechanical bond, let's through say. Mechanical bond, yes. Okay. And so this uh, NSP then is going to basically, I, I heard Chris talk about an analogy before, see it as Velcro straps. 
So you'd have mm -hmm. the NSP as your base Velcro, and yes. then you have your coating on top as the other part of the Velcro. That's... So they're attaching a very solid bond yes. to each other. Hence why you're probably going to see an extended durability out of your coating, or at least a lot longer than it should Absolutely. in normal conditions, yes. right? So with this replace, for example, normally with ceramic coatings, uh, you would IPA wipe your surface with an isopropyl alcohol mix or a paint prep spray to remove mm. polishing oils. Right. With this, my understanding is you don't need to do that. Don't do that. So you're more that. efficient, yeah. you save a step. Yes. But what is it doing to prep the surface without you having to use, because it's still a polish and a primer. Well, I call it a primer. It's, I don't Actually, I don't use the polish, word polish anywhere. Okay. And I, it just primes it, just to get the surface ready. So priming is getting the surface ready for the next step. Okay. And so this is the tool for the ceramic coating afterwards. Gotcha. So this is just pure inorganics. Is so, it cutting a bit though? Is it shaving a bit of that clear coat? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is abrasives in here. So okay. the one, the one fifty is the uh, cuts the most. It's like a compound. Yes. And then, and this is the size of the abrasive. So it's the bigger like, the number, the more cut. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is actually what's great about a sphere. You have an actual size. When you get abrasives, you get various small cuts, big, big things. So this is exactly one point five mi mi microns okay. thick. Okay. In the abrasive, and this yes. is uh, 0 0.95. 0 0.95, and then you have the 45, which is even smaller 45, than that. Yes. Okay, so if you want that last finishing touch, the most gloss, the less cut, right. it's the 45. Right. But they still all act as primers, right? Correct. So you don't need to IPA wipe, you can directly go to ceramic coating. Yes. How long after the application of this can you apply the ceramic coating? Actually, I want you to do it within a half hour. Okay. I want you to apply it within a half hour. So with as soon as you're done, do you can start going yeah, around with Yeah, go around, sir, put it oh, in. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, the other thing I was curious about this, I've seen uh, my buddy Phil from Miranda Detailing, so he loves these NSPs. Uh, sometimes, depending on his conditions, environment, humidity, that kind right. of stuff, he'll get a bit of that ghosting effect on top. Right. But I think for users, if you ever get that, don't be scared, because can you explain briefly what it is? Because it's not yeah. something that's disastrous or a catastrophic no, no. failure. Normally, that'll happen in black paint. It yep. gets a little go ghosted. What it is, is the molecules there on the surface, it's the nano in there looking. It's the Velcro, the bottom of the Velcro, yes. looking for the top. For something to grab onto. Grab onto. Okay. So as soon as you put a coating on top of that, yes. it goes away. That's Crystal why it clear. disappears. Because it grabbed yeah. onto, it did its job, and yeah. then you're done. Right. Okay, so you shouldn't be worried about that. No. I love that we cleared that through. So this is great. I can't wait to, to test these, the NSPs. Uh, next, we move on to something that's often asked by viewers. So how do you clean Alcantara? It's actually micro suede. Alcantara is the brand, but everybody, yeah. everybody knows it's Alcantara. So we know that you're not supposed to oversaturate it with liquids. Uh, people are always trying to find how do you do it. So I see you have here in a spray form uh, your micro suede cleanser. Mm -hmm. So how does this one work and what's the kind of technology that you put in there to specifically address micro suede? Basically, I wanted regular cleaners and surfactants, they can leave a residue behind. Okay. It leaves it actually kind of hard in there. So I want to remove all as much residue as possible when you go to clean. Get all those oils off from yes. your lunch, your oily hands, french your fries, hands. and everything else. Yep. And I wanted to pull it, but I didn't want to leave anything behind. That's why you leave it so nice and soft and stuff. So it's a special low residual leaving uh, surfactant. So it's a very specialized surfactant. Surfactant in there. In there. And yeah. so it's gentle. So you would spray this on the surface or on a towel. How do you? How would you use this? You know, I'm thinking about the stick shift right now. So I'm thinking spray it in a towel. You don't okay. want it all over the console. Yep. But if it's a seat, you could spray it right onto the, okay. the, the, the seat. That's and then you're fine. just wiping with a microfiber yeah. towel? Okay, super You wipe it off, scrub. Sometimes, you know, I like to use a kind of a horsehair brush or something like that. Yep. It kind of brings the fluff back. Yes, absolutely. Because when you're using sprays or liquids, it's going to mat down those fibers. Right. But at the end, a quick brush with a, either an upholstery or a leather brush, for right. example, it's going to bring those fibers right back up. It looks factory fresh. Yep. So this basically helps to remove all those body oils, the grime, the dirt, and all yes. that stuff. That's all micro suede. Fantastic. Yep. And in the spray form. By the way, I noticed your bottles. Great job. The labeling, guys. This is matte. It feels so premium in the hands. So it's part of the experience of having something that is upper scale, it looks very different compared to what we're used to. So mm -hmm. kudos to you on that. Uh, you. Next, we have something new. So I always like to show new products on the channel. You guys know that. So we have here the Bead Hero. I can read that it says hydrophobic ceramic spray, but if you can tell us uh, what this is and what's the kind of durability that we can expect out of the, the product. Um, Bead Hero is a product that I did. It's a spray on less a month or two, um, but I wanted I wanted the beads to roll off, and I wanted to roll off fast and yes. at a low angle. Yes. Because I wanted to keep that surface clean. And I'm an anti-bead guy. I don't like beads so much, but if I'm going to have you them like on the there, sheeting. Yeah, we were I talking want about the, that. <laughs> I love the sheeting. I love yes. a dry surface afterwards. Yes. But if we're going to do it right, let's get the beads there. And the beads are the hero because they carry off the dirt. 
yes. from the surface. Yes. And that's what a good, uh, so it, like you could have any technology, you could have any, any kind of uh, um, brand underneath it, but this will help it roll off. It'll help the dirt go off. As long as you have nanotechnology yes. and it's not sticking to the surface, this will help it keep it clean. So basically, if you have any ceramic coating, graphene coating, polysilazine, yep. as long as it's nanotechnology, yep. you can use this as a topper. Yep. So it's going to come in and basically seal that surface again and yep. prevent dirt from sticking, make it easier yep. to wash. Mm -hmm. And what I like about Jim is, as he said, he likes water sheeting a lot because it prevents water spotting issues, prevents minerals from depositing. The water just flees off the panel, easier and quicker to dry as well. But there's a lot of people who, and myself included, we still like to see the effects of beads. But thanks to your low sheeting, your uh, low sheeting angle, should I say, or water dispersion. So this one here right. still does the beading well. However, it's going to be able to pull that water and still eject it off the panel. Is that my understanding? That's correct. Yeah. Awesome stuff. So this is brand new to the line. And then we have this quad little setup, which you can get in a kit. So Dr. Beasley's has a kit for uh, matte surfaces, which if you guys haven't seen that yet, I have a full tutorial on the channel on matte surface care. So check that out, Pandy Organizer. And I use a lot of these Dr. Beasley's products because they were, at least to my knowledge, one of the first to market uh, with products specifically made for matte surfaces. So for people who don't know, often even a matte paint coating, you still get a, um, uh, a top coat if you want, or that clear coat. It's just the way that it's finished off. It has a matte appearance. But yeah. people only think it's just paint. No, you have that clear coat on top. It's a yeah. matte clear coat. Right. So you develop products basically to take care of matte surfaces. And I know you're not supposed to use gloss enhancing products or polishes to not polish the surface uh, or any things that can alter the, the surface basically. So what would you say about your lineup if we start with this one? For example, this is a matte paint coating. Yeah, it's a coating specifically for matte cars. We tell people as soon as they get their car, basically wash it. Yes. And then put this on right away. And you're Easy getting to a use. about a protection. About a year. About a year. year. Okay. A year. A year. And this oh. is wipe on. Wipe on. Buff off. Uh, yeah, with an ab ab applicator. Okay. We, we, it's like a, like a traditional ceramic coating. Yeah. So a cross hatch. Cross hatch is fine. Okay. One thing I like about this, we recommend a wet application because you want to reduce as much friction as possible when it comes to mat. Okay. And even that little applicator going across, yes. with something on there. Yes. I like the wet ap application because the material goes on longer and it helps the cross linking. The water actually helps the cross linking start faster. So you would wash the car, rinse it, and while it's still wet then you would go ahead and apply, go ahead and apply that. Okay, yeah. that's cool. See, these are kind of tips and tricks that we like to share, guys. So talking about washing, though, on matte surface cars, you don't want to use any shampoos traditionally that have gloss enhancers or waxes inside them, and so you developed a matte body wash. Right. What can you reveal without saying any any, any industry secrets uh, about the shampoo that is specifically designed or that you made for matte surfaces? What makes this particular for matte surfaces? Well, a lot of it is, oh, sorry, it, what it is, you leave it things out out of it, but um, when you have mat, you have any dirt or particles in there, you want it to foam and pull away from the surface. Yes. So you want to get that. And Lift, would, encapsulate. Yes. Yeah. And you want the lubricity there so you can easily get that off if Absolutely. you're wiping with a mitt or something like that. So, so higher lubricity, the, less chances of marring the surface. Yes. So when you're doing the contact wash, that's a lot of the chances where you're getting that swirls, the scratches, the love marks, is the washing phase, <laughs> the hand drying with the towel stage. So anytime yeah. your hand touches with any product, right. that's where you have higher chances of getting that yeah. marring. So you're reducing this with higher yeah. lubricity, right? Higher lubricity. And what I recommend if you wash your matte car, yep. you get it wet, get the big stuff off, Foam it up again with this. And let foam it, cannon? Yeah, foam cannon. Okay. Let it dwell. Let the chemistry work. Yes. Let it just sit there. I think people are so fast with their mids and stuff. No, I say just let it sit there. And this is when I do the wheels around the car. Okay. <laughs> and then it's there for a few minutes. Hose it off again. Yes. Now you've loosened everything up. You're, you're getting the, uh, the bigger dirt off. Yes. And anything gets stuck. And it marinated a little bit. So anything that's on a little bit softer. Now foam it up, rinse it off, Yep. foam it up again, and now you go to it with a mitt. So that's that's what I often tell my viewers as well. The pre-wash stage is not just mm -hmm. for show and tell. The, uh, the snow foam, if you get proper cleaning products, they're gonna do that initial cleaning of the majority of that loose dirt and grime before you do the contact wash. Again, in an effort to minimize scratches and swirls. And of course, on a matte surface, because you never polish a matte surface, you wanna make sure that you never install some scratches or swirls. So next up in the lineup, uh, we have this one here. This is the matte final finish. So what is this product in the line? This is basically a de detail spray for your matte car. Okay. So when you get your matte car, not a lot of people out in the pu public seen those cars before. Yep. So 
You get strangers touching your car yes. with their fingerprints <laughs> and stuff. So this is going to get the fingerprints off your car. A little spray and wipe. And so like the, the quick detailer everybody's used yes. to, but made specifically for matte for surfaces. Matte. Yeah. So finger smudges, light dust, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yep. Perfect for that. Awesome. And then last but not least, we have the matte paint cleanser. So yep. what's the difference between the QD and the matte paint cleanser? This is something you may get on your car, over spray, or you get something on your car that you can't get off, even like... Uh, Tar or something okay. um, like uh, tar from a tree. Bird or dropping, maybe? bird dropping. Okay. Well, bird dropping, you could actually use that. Okay. But something that's got stuff. We get some people with overspray. Something got on there, paint or paint, something. Yes, paint, from the lions on the road. Lions, yep. Use that. Let it dwell, and then you get it off. This is okay. a stronger, clean, cleaner. It's so pretty strong. Decontamination style as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's for that. Fantastic. And yeah, just get that spot. You wash your car, and there's a spot that's not coming off for any reason, and uh, and you use this. You want to get it off. It it. It, it uh, makes it crumble, almost crumble, fall apart, and then you wipe it off, it's off, and then, and then that, that's what you use that for. That's what you use it for, fantastic. Well, Jim, thanks for the explanations, but now I know you guys are dying. Let's go in another room and do that demo of chemistry. You're gonna love it. So Jim, let's go do that. Okay. All right, guys, so probably an industry first. I'm here with Jim, as you guys know. So we're gonna do a quick little chemistry demonstration. We're gonna blend something live right in front of you. And I think, Jim, you said you're gonna ship it out to me afterwards. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. We're gonna make something here. What exactly are we making? We're gonna make vegan leather cream. So a more thicker, viscous product. Right. And we're gonna see how we do that. So let's go behind the bench and see. A lot of these electric cars now have vegan le leather on the inside. Yes, the like Tesla, Tesla. the yep. Rivian and stuff. So I always thought when a customer, they want to condition their seats, what are they going to use? They're not going to use leather, leather cream because what, you know what's in that? Um, lanolin. Yes. Lanolin is yes. oil from animals, a lamb, I think. Yep, because of that and, glossy, shiny appearance that not yeah. everybody loves. Yeah. yeah, but it's oil from an animal. I don't think they want that. <laughs> On so being, yeah. so yes. let's create a product just, just for them. Yep. And this thickness, I love a product that's thick. I okay. can control it, I can put it on an applicator, I can control it, and it seems rich and it looks great. I just love it going from basically viscosity of water yep. to something super thick. Okay, so let's so do that. So we're gonna that. see that. Because yes. all I see in front of me are a lot of liquids, but we're yeah. gonna somehow make <laughs> some cream with it. Maybe care, okay. I have some lab coats here, I don't know what happened to them. But, uh, do you wanna? Yes, let's put some PPE. Put some goggles. This reminds me of my days in the lab. <laughs> Fun days, right? Yep. Okay, I actually have the formula right here. So we're just gonna go right down the line. This is reverse osmosis water. So I love the purest water we can get. So, so what's the difference? A lot of viewers as well watch this. RO water versus distilled water. What are the main differences? Both have no minerals inside them. Why would you use RO and why? You may know, but I'm not too sure. Reverse is a little more pure. I know yes. it's, uh, it's distilled water. You got it goes through a distillery and it drops through. Yep. Reverse osmosis, they're pulling out, and I know there's wastewater with that. There's yes. some wastewater, but yep. you're pulling it out with filters. Yes. Okay. So it's more of a mechanical type of filtration okay. versus the DI, which uses that resin right. to kind of filtrate the minerals out of it. But I mean, this is I as pure as it a, gets. Right. Yeah, that's good. Right. So I need about 400 grams. 414. So can I memorize that formula? Is that how I Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is the formula. So always high quality water, never tap water, obviously when yeah. you're blending chemicals, better shelf life, stability, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think this would. Plus the rest of the raw ingredients don't have to fight with the minerals in regular tap Absolutely. water. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So very precise measurements, thanks to the scale. So we're like at a tenth of a gram. Yeah, there we go. Oh, good, I got a pen here. You know, it's off a little bit, it's okay. Yep. 415, one. So this is what we're gonna start. Also, it's always, when you have a water-based product, you always wanna preserve it in there. You don't need to put much in there, but you know, this bottle can be sitting in someone's garage, it gets very hot. Yes. And whenever there's water, things can grow. Yep. So, you don't need much, so I'll put about fungi, a gram. Bacterial growth, all bacterial that kind of growth. stuff. So you need yep. about a gram. Yep. Guys, this is pretty cool. We're, we're having something done. I hope you're enjoying this because <laughs> this is really behind the scenes as much as I can go. This is a blade for viscous products. Yep. Because if I had... I'm geeking out. So you're gonna help homogenize the entire mixture with yes. whatever you're putting in there? Yeah. Yep. We gotta start by getting 
that antibacterial growth in there as much as possible, not very thorough. Yeah, but this blade is better than this blade. So if I'm gonna make something very thick, this, this is not gonna, it's just gonna shear right through it. And it got, it's not gonna mix it very well. Reminds me of a bolt propeller, that one. Yes. Yeah. When you do a lot of experience, you learn to use disposable things because it's hard to clean up <laughs> afterwards. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a solvent um, right here. It helps, this helps the product bond to the substrate. So you have a little, only need, oh shoot. Start that over. I didn't balance it, so let's get that balanced. And 3.6 grams. So it's a lot of trial and error as well when you're building something oh, yeah. to find the exact quantities and how to mix it. A lot of trial and error. So you were saying which product were you talking about uh, many, many years even of development that you were working the on? The NSP. The NSP. So that's Five not a thing minimum. like one month no. and it's done there. Yeah. No. Um, we could talk about that for, I could talk about that for a day. For ages. I hope we got to that. So this little bit of a solvent. What, you know, I had to get some kind of an oil for vegan leather. And what works really well is grapeseed oil. So after they make wine, they got all this excess grapes and they can process that further and we get grapeseed oil. Okay. And this is the thing, some, you know, some high end um, beauty where women go to yes, get their makeup face stuff, stuff, yeah. stuff they, yeah. use, they use grapeseed oil for their face. Absolutely. And, and vegan leather is less porous than leather. And so when people use leather creams and stuff, it's, it turns out real oily, it's kind of a mess. Yep. So this is a little, a little more refined. Does vegan leather still, like regular leather, have a top coat on it? Like a yes. clear polyurethane? Polyurethane layer? top coat. So what you're doing is you're cleaning and you're protecting that top coat and that not top the coat. leather right. surface itself. Yeah. Sometimes vegan leather, they talk about it being made out of mushrooms, out of uh, mangoes and stuff, but it really is a polyurethane on the top. Yeah. That's protecting it. So I'm gonna go to 4.5 here. There we go. My grapeseed oil. And I can also add a little bit of a surfactant in here. Surfactants help bring everything together also, my mm -hmm. chemicals together. So I like to use a little bit of that. Seven grams here. They're going to help break down a bit of that body fat, body oil kind of thing too? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like to mix this up a little bit. Get so this, this is how the chemists, and as you guys can tell, there's a lot of companies that use third-party blenders, which is fine as well. But for Dr. Beasley's, he blends their own products right here in the shop. So that's pretty awesome. And you get to see kind of like how things work behind the scenes. You know, it's been enough time that uh, antibacterial is pretty much through the water. So we'll just add this. This is what the leather cream wants to keep it nice and soft and subtle, supple. That gives it that color too that we expect when we're yeah. looking at the final product. Yeah. Now, I'm not, I don't like to add dyes mm -hmm. to this. I think there's some leaching or some things could transfer a yep. little bit. So I'm not, if I don't have to, I'm not gonna add that. I'm also, when you, a lot of this is plant-based. This is all renewable stuff that I'm using, grapeseed oil and stuff yes. like that. You don't need to put a scent in there. You're, I'm going to have to smell Fragrance this afterwards. Free. Fragrance scent, free, yep. and you don't need it. And it actually smells really nice. Does, well, I can Plant smell it up to here. It already okay. smells nice, yeah. So I've got a glycerin, a, a plant-based renewable uh, glycerin, and I'm going to put that up together now. That keeps it nice and moist. Oh, this is really thick. I forgot. So Very let's try to get... So if, if anybody's out there thinking that they can just hodgepodge something together in their garage, it doesn't work like that. You need actual background in chemistry and I'm, I'm geeking out right now. I'm like a kid in a candy store. There we go. What's my last one? Okay, so this is second to last. And I don't mind putting this in, the same thing you put the other ingredients in. I might as well, you know, you can pick a little bit of that up. Yep. It's not contaminating because it's all going in the same thing. Exactly. But in a lab, you got to be very careful about cross-contamination. Mm -hmm. So the products that you've added now, what are they doing for the mix itself? This is glycerin. I'm just adding glycerin in here. So that keeps it nice and soft and it, it keeps moisture. 
in the product and on the on the substrate too on the leather it keeps a nice look to it so when you're looking for that supple feel yeah that's going to participate to give right. in that yeah with the grapeseed oil too yep so let's just mix that for a little bit and i'm going to add my favorite part there's always a chance of failure <laughs> <laughs> this is where we want things to thicken up yeah so this is 12 grams maybe i'll pour this out let's get this to zero There we go. 12.8. Oh. That's right. I did this a little bit earlier. I want to make sure I have enough in here. I'm going to add two more grams. Let's put a little more of that in there, right? Okay. So let's, uh, our goal is, this is this is like water. It's like water now. So our yes. goal is, hey, can we make this thick? I like things in tubes. I like things to be really thick. So let's put this in here. So it's like a thickening agent when you're cooking some food and you need something yeah. to increase the thickness of the sauce you're making. So does the rotational speed of the device itself affect how the, uh, the product becomes viscous Yeah, or not? and yeah. you'll see if I kept, I just upped the speed if I, when it gets thicker, um, it's more difficult to cut through. Yep. So let's see if this one goes. So. Sometimes you got to add a little bit to it, but it's getting a little syrupy. So you can adjust on the fly as needed. Yeah. Something just changed in there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah. The opening around the shaft is getting smaller and smaller. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's like you're brewing a cocktail. <laughs> See, it's not moving around as much yeah. anymore now, so we right. can tell how thick it is. It's almost like a gel-like substance. Yeah. I'm starting to lose my grip. Okay. Look at that. Science at work. So I think that's pretty good. Let me turn this off and let's see. Make sure this is thick that I like. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. It's like a yogurt. Yeah, to me this is. Yeah, look on, look on the shaft itself. There you go. It, it's not even dripping. So this, yeah, to me this is beautiful. I just love this. Yes. I love that. I think that's just, I'm like, oh, success. It's like Dairy Queen. You know when they reverse <laughs> their, uh, their ice cream and it's not falling? Now we're going to do a test. This is one of my tests. Now this is a different picker I normally use, but let's, do you want to turn it upside down? Oh, you can smell it. Smell it? How does it smell? Yeah, that smells fresh, clean, no additives. Yeah. 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 And I always like to, let's see if it works. It could be, I don't want to embarrass myself, but there you go. Oh, there you go. It's upside down. Yeah, okay. Totally. So we <laughs> Wow. So, you know, so would I you put it too? directly in, in this? No, I can't pour it. Okay. I, I really got to use a spatula to so get it in. So this is the Dr. Beasley's vegan leather cream plant-based formula. And this is one made by hand, freshly made for Pan, the organizer. Just I for Pan. So do you do that for every, every bottle? You hand bottle it up? We hand bottle, but we make batches bigger than this, okay. though, right? And I made a little mess. My guys here in the factory are a little bit better than me. I think they put yeah, it in Yeah, that was my guess. You're probably yeah, not yeah. the one bottling them up. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but. I think so we put it in a big squeeze bottle. Okay. Oh, wow. Well. I, th that's crazy that we started with these liquids and you finish mm. with a nice cream. Yeah, this has got a nice little shine to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks premium. So you can buy it in a kit that comes with the, um, the uh, vegan leather cleaner. Cleaner, and that's plant-based too. So you'd apply mm -hmm. it with the uh, supplied foam applicator kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do it with that. Any applicator would do. I just put in a little kit for everyone. Isn't that? There that's, you go. That's the pan, the organizer vegan cream that you guys saw made right here. So uh, you'll be shipping this over to yeah. Montreal, Canada. Oh, here, yeah. And, let's, oh, cool. Let's put it in the premium box. Oh, yes. I, I love your labeling. 
Just right there. in there? Yeah, I think. So you got the microfiber towel. So is this a spray uh, cleaner? This is a spray cleaner, okay. yep. Plant-based too. Spray it on, you can use a leather brush maybe if you want to brush the yep. surface if it's, uh, to agitate yep. the cleaner. Yep. Okay. Well, a lot of those vegan leather and those Tesla, you see how white those things, those are. Yes. Yeah, they get, they do get dirty. They so, are. So this will uh, clean up real nice. So what's the difference between this and other leather cleaners that might have other types of surfactants, emulsifiers, whatever is in there? What's your formulation without revealing secrets? Yeah, this is plant-based and it's a polymer cleaner. It's like a polymer. It's a polymer surfactant. We find that it's able to get organic materials. You see a lot in cars, French fries and different food stuff, yep. baby stuff to clean up. But also, you get a lot of scuff marks from shoes. Yes. And sometimes organic cleaners don't do a good job with this. This is a good job where you don't need a solvent in the car. You can get the scuff marks off too. So it's a polymer surfactant. It's a little bit different uh, type of surfactant. And when people hear, like traditionally, if we go back five or six years ago, when I used to hear this is an eco product, the green product, the plant-based, mm -hmm. we knew that the performance was not there, but I mm -hmm. think the, the it's we're starting to evolve a lot yeah. in this. So this here still gives you the performance of another cleaner, but made specifically for that vegan surface, right? Correct. So you're not going to harm or damage? Won't harm or damage it. Okay. Right. Correct. And since it's for that top coat, could you use this on traditional clear-coated leather as well? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So another eco-friendly product and in a beautiful box, ready to go out. Jim, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, guys, all the links to the products will be linked in the description under the video. Uh, show Jim some love. Go. Do you guys have a social media page? Oh, yeah. Okay, you have that too. So go check those out. And uh, hopefully you'll be seeing more of the Dr. Beasley's on the Pandy Organizer channel. In the meantime, guys, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.